Hi, this is Brother Richard, <coughs> and today <coughs> we're <coughs> discussing a topic called From Eternity. Now this deals with <coughs> a specific group that God has from eternity predisposition of something that would take place here in life. I want to take a look at some principles dealing with this group. Scripture teaches there are souls called by God from eternity to be rulers and instructors over his creation. Turn to Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. So we see these things <clears throat> taking place in eternity, <clears throat> which pertain to this, this group. The word called there literally means to beckon. And it means that they were, they were called by name. And they were called as individuals. <clears throat> And each one was justified, in other words, declared not guilty of any wrongdoing, and they were also glorified. That is, <clears throat> destined to be changed to the highest state of existence, the divine state, which only the Father and the Son occupy. Now, <clears throat> We want to drop down verses 16 to 19, same chapter, Romans 8. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children and heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So this is saying that this group <coughs> is going to be glorified simultaneously. So they basically constitute an elite group. And there's a name for this group. They're going to be called the Prototokos, the assembly of the firstborn ones. Jesus being the first of this group to complete the requirements for kingship, rulership of all things. All those that are part of this group become co-heirs with him of all things. Yes. Okay, you're saying they're all glorified at the same time, but we know that it's a two, two group. Two groups are glorified in the dead in Christ first. first. Mm. They really constitute one group, all those that have been qualified for the glorification. But then why does it specify, and it is specific, one group, the dead first? Where's the separation between the two? Because what's being said here is that those that qualified that didn't live at the time that the rapture is going to take place are already in heaven, in one level or another of heaven. Those that qualified are still alive, they still constitute the same group. When the evaluation takes place, They've all been counted worthy to experience the change. So, if I'm understanding it correctly, those that are still alive and haven't yet died at the point when this glorification is going to happen, it's not as if their lives are cut off and then they're glorified. No. They no, they no, they're continuing, their lives. yes. Right, okay. They're continuing. It's <clears throat> the only difference is because of one is in one location mm -hmm. in the heavens and the other is still on earth, because you have a time span of generations between the qualification of the first generation, which was at the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. When he ascended to the Father, the clock started. 
on those that could qualify for this position. Now, the second group which are still on earth, are you saying, well, I'm asking, are they all martyrs, every single one? No. No. Who are they? They're people who are alive at the time that the rapture takes place, who have qualified for glorification. This is what constitutes the rapture. <clears throat> the thing of it is, is, see, I was saying if it's going to happen simultaneously, mm -hmm. the dead in Christ rise first, mm -hmm. then, then those who are alive in the rain are gathered together. But it's gathering. It's not the, it's not the glorification. The, well, the glorification, basically, if you want to use it in a time frame, you can't even... You can't even um, calculate the difference between the dead being changed and the not living being changed because it happens instantaneously. Okay. The dead re uh, descend of where they are. The living are still doing the Holy Spirit has them in abeyance waiting for the instantaneous change. The dead are changed. At the same time that the dead are changed, the living are changed. The dead rise first and then the living rise, and then right. they merge around the Lord in the heavens. So literally the glorification happens simultaneously. The rising is with separation. Right. And so anyone living after that period of time has missed the rapture. rapture. Gotcha. You could be and, a, and it's those that are the martyrs. Right. They okay. will, yeah, the ones that right. missed the change. Yes. <clears throat> uh, a second is the same as an eternity as far as that's concerned. You've missed the change. You got there, the change took place a nanosecond before you got there. You're done. Uh, you yeah. Gone, the door's closed. Wow. So what we find that, that they constitute one unique group. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they have all been qualified for glorification. Now the Father in eternity predestinated this. Each one is going to participate in the glorification process has been called, justified, and glorified. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> the principle is that these have been designated to be rulers and instructors over the Father's creations. More than one. Turn to Hebrews, second chapter, verse 8. Thus put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not that all things put under him. So this is referring again to this unique group. The Father from eternity has predestinated them to inherit all things that the Father has brought into existence. Yes. At the time, he's saying, but now we see not yet. Mm -hmm. What's the thing that has to change for them to be part of all things that are put under them? Glorification. Okay. But the, <clears throat> the whole essence here is that they are heirs of all things. Gotcha. They just have not come in, in, into their inheritance yet. Yes. Now, Scripture teaches that God has in the temporal life of each one of this group <coughs> ordained specific experiences. 
From eternity, God has ordained each one that he called justified and glorified to have specific experiences. Turn to Acts, the 13th chapter, verse 44 to 48. Now what we have is a shift in <clears throat> the um, rendering of God's inheritance from the Jews to the Gentiles because the Jews, Israel, have, has rejected Christ. So the Father is now bringing in the Gentiles, and we see this transition taking place <coughs> at the <coughs> actions of Paul and those that are preaching the gospel to the Jews, who the Jews are rejecting it. Verse 44, the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes of uh, Gentiles, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So they, by their own actions, have disqualified themselves from the inheritance. Now, the envy was in them realizing we messed this up. No. Otherwise, why would they be envious? They were envious because they <clears> felt <throat> that the Gentiles weren't worthy to hear the word of God. Only they were. I understand that part, but they've now been told, you guys didn't do what you were supposed to do. So we've now given it to another group. That's essentially what they've been told. Yeah, but this was, be this was after they did their thing. Their envy caused them to blaspheme the word of God, to denigrate it, put it down, because these no-count Gentiles, what are they doing here, hearing what we are supposed to be hearing? Right, even though we didn't want it. So Paul said, what you just did is you disqualified yourself. Right. So we're turning to the Gentiles. Now they can, they can receive all of it, you get nothing. I think if I was a Jew in that time, that would have been very painful for me to hear. What for them? They were so angry uh, that they... But they completely missed the point. Sure they did. Mm. Well, that was Satan behind it. Mm. They basically were on an ego trip. We're Israelites. These no-count Gentiles shouldn't even be here right. because Jews don't associate with Gentiles. Right. What are they doing here? This is for us. Oh, you want them to hear it? Well, we don't want no part of it. Mm. Paul says, okay, you don't want no part of it, it's going to be all for them. Wow. So, we notice what it goes on to say. Verse 47, For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, and glorified the word of the Lord, and now listen, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Those that God called from eternity. This, this whole thing basically was engineered by God mm. so that the transit of the heritage could be gone, taken from Israel and given to the Gentiles. Do you agree that anyone, Jew or Gentile, could be forgiven for thinking the Lord has punished, I don't know if that's the right word, punished, he's upset with the Jews because he's saying, I'm now giving this to a larger group and you're not going to get anything. It, it, it makes it hard mm -hmm. to continue to understand the concept of the Jews come first. The, the Israel is my, my, my nation. Well, Paul goes and explains it in, an, in another part. God only set them aside because they themselves disqualified themselves by what they did. God always responds to the decisions that we make. 
Mm -hmm. He in, isn't initiating anything. He wants them to receive the gospel. Jesus came to the Jew first and gave them all kinds of opportunities. They didn't take, take advantage of it. So know? literally, Paul and Barnabas are teaching about Jesus. And they're, they're not only re rejecting Barnabas and Paul's teaching, they're rejecting Jesus. Again. Jesus is the one who pays for the sins. So that means if you're not accepting the one who's paying for it, mm. then you're disqualified. Wow. Sure. But they clearly don't <clears throat> understand that. I don't, I don't think no. this is a case of them saying, we hear you very clearly, we understand every word you're saying, but we're not having it. I'm sure it's a case of, we don't get what you're actually saying. Well, they because surely nobody would. So would. they're going to go pay for their own sins by mm. their sacrifice mm. and stay in the law. And that's... <clears throat> yeah, we have to understand that these people have been programmed for hundreds of years. And that was the point In the mosaic said. way of thinking yes. about things. Yes. And so, basically, they came to hear what Paul was saying about this mm. new concept of Jesus mm. and what he did. In mm. other words, the gospel. And because the Gentiles were there, they never even gave Paul and Barnabas a chance. Because of envy, <clears throat> because of their openness to Luciferian influence, they shut the door on themselves. But I think that you also said uh, in, in another, a previous lesson that they expected to hear this was a continuation of the old law. And when they didn't hear that, when that wasn't made clear, yeah, clearly this is complete nonsense. We haven't got time for that. Well, that, yeah, that was part of it. <clears throat> but the idea is they were never really open to receive. They never objectively evaluated what Paul was saying. <clears throat> they were allowing themselves to be clouded by their own emotion, mm -hmm. their own feeling of things, of injustice, that the, 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 the Gentiles don't have an equality with the Jews, and because the Gentiles were here, that just colored everything. <clears throat> we don't want to hear it. And then they began to blaspheme the word. That shuts the door right away. When you, when you put down God and the things of God, the word of God, you shut yourself off. Jesus had, had a gospel, and him confessing that he's the, the son of God, that right there is not acceptable. Okay, so then he's going to follow it up with miracles. And in those days, there were other people that could do false <coughs> miracles. Right. And so it wasn't, it was common for someone to, to do, do miracles, to right, do miracles right. for, or extraordinary events. Right. I don't want to call them miracles. Yeah. But the thing of it is, is, so how do you decide correctly? And, and he just read it. Those who were ordained went into eternal life. And the thing of it is, is, so... By the review that the Lord and the Father did, they knew who was going to accept and who wasn't. And so those who, were, who did accept that they knew about were ordained to enter eternal life. The others, they didn't make it. I have to ask a question at this stage. Do you think that the Jews who heard that explanation, that you know, there was a review, <coughs> for want of a better term, by the Lord, previous to anyone even existing, as to who would and who wouldn't you know, uh, be on board with this. Do you think that the Jews understood that to be a real part of Mosaic law? That was, that, that was nothing that they would have <clears throat> even considered. Uh, Prehistory, eternal, the, the eternal con concepts mm. would be alien to them. But hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulty understanding that only because they have a God who talks to the leaders of their nation. Mm -hmm. They have a God who has fellowship with, who actually puts Moses into <laughs> a rock. Mm -hmm. So they're not, you know, um, disassociated in any way, shape or form with a miraculous God. This is a miraculous God. Right. Why would they, why would that concept, there was you know, a predetermination, why would that be so alien to them? Because they're described in the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. the, the law, the religion had been so corrupted from Moses' time to Jesus' time that Jesus said, that you, you, we can't do anything with this wow. because you've corrupted it by your tradition. Right. So they wouldn't have any concept of uh, eternal eternity in that respect. Moses did right. because when you read Hebrews, it says he evaluated what he could have in this life and what he could have in eternity. Exactly. 
But by the time of Jesus, the scribes and the Pharisees, by the time they got through with it, all they would focus on is this life. And they were known as those who studied God's word. Right. So they were they have to know truth from error. Just as the false teachers today, they don't yeah. go into prophecy. Right. They don't go into the things of uh, the future. They keep, keep everybody in the here and the now. But let's go on. What we find, those that were ordained, and, and also in this respect, not all the Gentiles accepted him. Only those who had been appointed to eternal life in eternity received it and accepted it. And only those that received it and accepted it come from the Prototokos group in this particular capacity. So when they're saying this, they're talking about Gentiles or Jews? Gentiles. Only. Yes. Only Gentiles. Yeah. That means anyone who is moved by, let me use the term moved, is moved by the call of God today, now, in 2019, is doing so because spiritually they recognize that their name is, is, is in the book. Is that, is that what you're saying? No. I'm saying that, and as the, Jesus talks about the parable of the sower, the gospel goes out and everybody hears it. And you have different responses. Those of this elite group that God purposed are going to respond in a specific way all the time. And out of every generation, you have a representative number of this elite group. Mm. You also have the others. But we're not focusing on them. Right. We're focusing on, on this the elite, elite, elite group. group. The good soil. Agreed. But members of the soil. elite group, and forgive me for, for continuing no, this, okay. but members of the elite group at the time they're first hearing it don't know what it is that they're hearing. They, they, they're they aware that spiritually there is some connection. I'm, I'm going to use myself as the example. Mm -hmm. When I very first came into contact with this, I had no idea what it was that I was hearing or feeling or experiencing. Right. But I did know that I was supposed to be in that place at that right. point in time. Right. And I guess, I guess it was that that made me to continue to do it. When people hear what we've got to say today for the very first time, and they decide or they've got to determine whether they're going to actually answer the call or not answer the call, do they have an understanding that the reason that they're actually answering the call is because it was done and dusted? It would actually be very hard for them not to answer the call. Not in that respect. It depends on the person. Mm. It depends on the person. It depends on the call of the person. Paul didn't respond for a long, long time. Right, right. Look what it took to get him. Yeah. Now, again, the father uh, makes... Um, provision in that respect. If you are part of the Prototokos group, you're going to respond. Because the Father predetermined in eternity, he looks at the end. He's not looking at what you do initially. Hmm. He looked at Paul and he told he told um, um, the, the, the guy that went and laid his hands on him, he said he's a chosen vessel. In your case, it was the same thing. Now, in the same the same situation, you could have somebody who immediately responds yes. wholeheartedly. God makes provision. If you're part of the Prototokos group, you're going to be in. That's one way or another. One way or okay. another. Now, in this particular case, these people responded immediately. Right. Ananias? Is that uh, the guy who laid his hands on him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's go on. Scripture teaches only those ordained by God in eternity for rulership and dominion will be given to Christ in this life. In other words, if you're part of the Prototokos group, you're going to be given to Christ to develop. <clears throat> Turn to the Gospel of John, 15th chapter, verses 15 to 17. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. 
but have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father have I made known unto you. So he's talking to the, uh, <clears throat> he's talking to this elite group about the things that pertain to them of the Father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Mm -hmm. I repeat that. You have not chosen me, I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. If you're part of Brother Tolkien's group, you're going to be fruitful because the Father is ordained from eternity. The life that you're living here, as long as you're open. And what you ask for, the Father will give you as you progress in the Father's will, his eternal will for your life. Now in your case, it took you a while mm -hmm. to come around. Mm -hmm. But when you come around... I think that was quick, personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of an intense um, yeah. um, um, <laughs> application. Okay, absolutely, you around. absolutely. Uh, this applies to you. What you're asking the Father for, He's going to give you. It doesn't mean instantaneously, but you're going to get it. Oh, I see that. Absolutely. Because you're part of the elite group. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Now, turn to, we're going to see how this they become His disciples. Supernaturally. Turn to um, Luke, 6th chapter, verses 12 to 13. day and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God and when it was day he called unto him his disciples and of them he chose twelve whom also he named apostles so the prayer to the father was to those that were going to be part of the prototokis group eleven men who they were. He didn't know. The Father directs him to call those that he did. Out of all his disciples, these eleven became the apostles. So the Father gives the members of the Prototokis group to the Son in this life to develop. John 17th chapter verse 6. Jesus confirms it. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So until that time they belonged to the Father. They were part of the Prototokis group. When the Son began his ministry, and the Father gives them into the hands of the Son. I like the last line, and they have kept thy word. Yes. Faithfulness. Well, because <clears throat> they're part of the group. Mm. Now, Scripture teaches a distinction is made between those whom the Father has called in eternity, the Prototokis group, and those who receive Christ in this life. Turn to John. You're in John the 6th chapter. We want verses 36 to 39. John the sixth chapter, and we want thirty-six to thirty-nine. He 
him, here he's talking to the Jews. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So what he's saying here, those that the Father has preordained are at some point going to come to Christ. You're going to hear the call. And that call is going to draw them to the Lord. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will. I'm going to repeat that. This is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So all those that the Father has chosen a call from eternity to the part of the Tokus group, the Father's will is that none of them would be lost. Now notice what it says in verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me. So again, he's repeating. This is the will of God that sent him concerning the others. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. So you have two groups. The ones that the Father purposed in eternity. These are the preordained, right? The predestinated, okay? The, the, pre the predestinated yeah. have been justified and glorified. But the others have not. Many are called, few are chosen. But you still have the same uh, in verse 40, and believe and believeth on him, referring to the second group, mm -hmm. the same result. May have everlasting life, and I will raise him up exactly. at the last day. But the calling and the predetermination is not from the prototokis group. Right. It's from events that take place in this life. That is why you will find there are several groups in eternity. Scripture teaches those of the prototokis group need no encouragement to pursue the kingdom, but will be found holding back the Luciferian influence and being about the master's business when the rapture occurs. Turn to 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter, verse 7. mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So the members of the Prototokis group are going to have this bulldog tenacity. They're going to be holding back the Luciferian influence until the Holy Spirit literally takes them off the earth. <clears throat> Turn to Matthew 24, verses 45 to 47. 24? Matthew 24. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Member of the Prototokis group is going to be in a position of leadership yes. by virtue of the fact that he's part of that elite group. Mm -hmm. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. He's an inheritor of all things. Now, not only is he invested with all this, Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter. 
because of the favor of the Father, all riches contained in the heavens are for the Prototokis group, along with all knowledge and all wisdom. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 2 to 8. Grace be to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So the predestination deals with, in this life, the Lord being given custody over that individual to mold him, to conform him to the pattern of himself. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Wisdom and understanding. The Prototokos group member is going to be of the wise. The wise are the ones that make the rapture. They're going to have understanding because they're pursuing the Word of God, revelation knowledge, and they're wide open to the experiences that they learn through experiencing these things. The Holy Spirit will give them understanding, preparing them for the eventual ascension to the presence of the Father. Everything we have here now is a preparation mm -hmm. for ultimate ascension to the throne of God. 